So I, put, I, I came up with a very boring uh, title of the talk, Engineering Biology, um, because I didn't want to disappoint you. What I'm really going to talk about is intelligent design. Um, you know what intelligent design movement is about. It's about the aspect that biology is so complex, there has to be somebody behind it pulling the strings. And that's how Earth came to be, life on Earth came to be, how humans came to be, how complex organs came to be, etc. Well, I'm going to tell you, intelligent design is real. And we are the designers. So what has happened within the last 10 years has been truly astounding in terms of techn technology development. We know about genetic manipulation, gene splicing, which has been about, around for about 50 years or so, give or take, 40 years. Uh, but within the last 10, 10 years, this has really, really accelerated. And it led to this emergence of a new discipline called synthetic biology. It's not, it's not the retooling, or it's sort of like retooling of um, existing biological organisms, but a, on a different level and with an incredibly broad outlook. And every single one of you in this room will be affected of it. The wars of the 21st century is not going to be fought over oil or access to mineral resources, gold, diamonds. No, it's not. It's going to be fought over biomass. Biomass in general, because we can now convert biomass into basically everything we want. So, and we're not just talking about Earth. We're talking about space. I'm going to get back to that at the end of the talk. Uh, so essentially, the intelligent design is an evolution of biotechnology in general, our ability to manipulate DNA. And synthetic biology is generally the notion that you can create novel life forms by advanced genetic engineering. So when I'm talking about uh, a novel life forms, science is not quite there yet to make a truly novel life form. But a few years ago, it took scientists three weeks to com complete the synthesis of a virus. Three weeks. They took a copy of an existing virus because they know it would work then. But just imagine that. In three weeks, you can create a completely new virus, modified in any way you want it. So, Obviously, a lot, of, a lot of safety issues associated with that, but there's also a lot of potential. Two years ago, a man-made genome was used to drive a living cell. It replicated, it formed colonies, it was a small two and a half million base pair genome, but nevertheless, the entire genome of this organism was man-made. It was still a copy of what we could find in nature because we're not smart enough yet to completely make it, make it artificial. And about a year ago, scientists started replacing eukaryotic chromosomal arms with things that were entirely made in the lab. As we proceed forward, what are the implications of these technologies? Well, the, one of the, oh, sorry, going back to, one of the driving forces behind this is there's a lot of creativity involved in it. Try to imagine if you can build your own organisms, what do you want it to do? And what are the implications of it? Think about it. So we talk about cells growing inside an apple. Well, why not have the apple grow muscle cells? Why not? So, and what was really smart was it, it was, was sort of this engagement of, of the community, and rather have, rather than having having all this work being done by specialist labs in, in special specialist location, it's so easy to get DNA now. You could just go on, online, order it. You have to pay about 20 cents per base pairs, but the price is going to come, come down, 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 down. And you can pr pretty much create your, or go order your own gene. You can have it in a week. It's amazing how these technology has advanced. So what happened about a decade ago was, was, um, uh, was this generation of, of a competition at MIT where undergraduates with no prior knowledge about biology essentially could come in and propose designs and try to go to the lab and see whether they could get it done. And tinker with these things in any way they can imagine. And if you go and look on the web, you'll find a million examples on, on projects that have been incredibly successful. So some f f sort of on the creative side, it's, it's, it's astounding. What we're talking about now is, is that you know, undergraduates are too advanced. No, 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 we want people in high school to do this. 
because we don't really, you don't really need a lot of technical expertise anymore. We have, we have machines to do the, all the technical stuff for us. So we don't have to labor around in a lab endlessly long nights. No, we put, put the sequence of the DNA we want into a computer and send it off via the internet and you get the, the physical material delivered to us. Now, so that's fun and all, but what are the global implications of this? Well, so one other thing is, uh, what is the outlook on the bioeconomy going forward? And there are really serious studies and very serious implications of this. Because if you can't convert uh, biomass that we find, well, it's really useless, right? Because only cows can eat grass. And, and growing cows have a lot of problems with it. They secrete a lot of, um, of, of, of gas in the atmosphere, and, and they're very expensive to do. So, well, one of the things we can do is we can grow meat without the cow, right? That's one example. So the bioeconomy is going to grow tremendously. Uh, it's been estimated that by the end of this, this, this decade, it's going to be about $240 billion worth um, in, 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 in commerce. And the vast majority of that is going to be uh, within uh, biofuels. Now, right, we have, <laughs> oil is a fantastic thing, but it just disadvantage is it takes a couple of million years to produce. So instead, why not use corn, sugar, whatever we can find and grow? And people are claiming that's a renewable resource. Some people saying it's not that renewable. Once you cut the forest and taking all out the sugar, well, you're just going to have a, nothing left to, to build on anymore. Anyhow, that's, a, that's a, not a discussion I'm here to talk about. But it's enormous. And that's why I'm saying that the wars are not going to be fought over oil because they're going to be depleted. The next natural resources we have is biomass. I'm going to go back to some of the more positive things about, about what we can do with, that, uh, with these synthetic organisms. And, and this was a team from, uh, from University of Edinburgh. It was a team of undergraduate students, uh, first to, to fourth years, like, uh, like everybody else. And what they did, what problem they wanted to address was this problem that arsenic poisoning has really has devastating effect. It's really expensive to detect in developed countries. So what they came up with was engineer a bacteria that they could freeze dry. In a, and then when you took a well water, you put the freeze dried bacteria into the well water, and the bacteria would change the pH of the well water if there's arsenic there. And that's very easy and very cheap to detect. You just need a pH indicator. So in this case here, it, it was freeze dried, right? So it's easy portable, just a little pouch. And a little pouch with the nutrients that would allow the bacteria to, to, to grow in, 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 in the well water. It's fantastic. Absolutely fantastic application of how we can re-engineer um, uh, uh, organisms to do beneficial things. Now, so, <laughs> the more outlandish uh, applications of this is that now we are getting think about what you can do. Right? And it has been around that if we want to see life on another planet, how will we do it? Well, we would design an microorganism, a very simple microorganisms that can actually grow and replicate in that environment and gradually convert very simple resources into more and more comp co complex carbon molecules and nitrogens and, and whatever and ev actually seed evolution on different uh, planets. So actually, it's, this is for real. NASA now has a synthetic biology initiative that sort of will look at, is explore how the construction of new biological functions and systems that are not found in nature can go in and, 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 and help um, uh, NASA's long-term mission. And, and they actually have this long-term objective on how these synthetic organisms and our ability to re-engineer living organisms or create new ones will come. So, so this is a vision of of, of how we come, we come from planet Earth and we, we settle onto, onto Mars and actually use these re-engineered organisms or novel organisms to, to, to do food production on, in space. And I just checked online, they actually call for, for a postdoctoral fellow with this specialty, how do we produce food in space? And with that, I'm going to say thank you to the organizers and for listening. <laughs>